In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a technique I call double smooth. So this is a sphere that's been smoothed a few times and with the Spherify uh, modifier turned into a perfect sphere. And I've extruded one of the faces inward. So with a turbo smooth with uh, just kind of regular options turned on, you can see that you basically get a uh, spherical indentation. This is round-ish, but if we wanted a square, this is not right. So one of the methods would be to start adding uh, control edges like this to keep everything smoothing hard. Um, so, so once the turbo smooth comes into effect, you get harder corners. The problem is that while this does indeed hold uh, tighter corners um, along the edges, you end up getting this really nasty pinching that no matter how many uh, turbo smooth iterations comes up, you can see it uh, does not smooth very well. This might be an effect that you want for something, but for, in most cases you want to be able to have something uh, smooth free. So in an ideal world, you would have constructed it from a much um, higher resolution primitive. So this one was taken uh, one level higher uh, in turbo smooth, collapsed down, spherified again, so the original model uh, looked like this. I extruded the same face, but this time it actually had two divisions, and then I added a division along here. So now with the Turbo Smooth, you can see, and if I turn it up again, you get quite a nice smooth. There's no pinching, everything around here. Now, for a sphere, this is easy because you could just keep up-resing it and you get a higher and higher resolution, or if you're starting something from scratch, it's quite easy. But there's kind of a middle way that allows you to keep a slightly less dense uh, control cage and still get something to smooth like this. So here's this. Let me turn it up again so we really get something smooth. So it's not 100% perfect like this, but it's very hard to see the errors around it. And especially if you were to then add a metal overlay, you've got a diffuse map, this is baked down to a low poly, you're basically not going to see any of these uh, problems. And this is a perfect sphere which shows uh, creases much better than something like an armor would anyway. So what this does is it actually has two turbo smooth modifiers. So if we go down to the lowest level, it looks exactly like this one. So here we have both of them look exactly the same. But this one smooths much better. And what ends up happening is the first turbo smooth is set so that it respects smoothing groups right here, smooth results. So you can see in this one, when it's turned on, neither of these are checked. It just smooths everything. So, and the way you control that is you actually have to set smoothing groups. So I actually normally just select all, set it to something like 25 and auto smooth, and that normally gives you good results. So you can see what happens is this first turbo smooth, when it's placed on, things that are on the same smoothing group end up getting uh, rounded out. But you can see these faces, because they were on separate smoothing groups, nothing happens to them except they get denser, but they don't kind of melt away or move at all. Only when you then place a regular turbo smooth that does not respect smoothing groups, see if I did respect smoothing groups, it would do it again, um, does it start to smooth away. So you end up getting kind of the best of both worlds. You have a lower resolution cage that's easier to manipulate with things like uh, soft selection or um, FFD modifiers, but you still get the, um, the tighter uh, edges that you get um, from having a denser mesh. So what you have to do, you put on one turbo smooth that's uh, set to smoothing groups, then you put another one on top that is not set to smoothing groups. And I normally like to keep isoline display and explicit normals um, because it keeps things cleaner. Like if I turn it off, you can see this. But you have to make sure you do not do that on the one below. The one below actually needs to have um, isoline and explicit normals uh, turned off. Because what ends up happening is if you do that, um, you get the vertices there, but not the edges. So the one above it doesn't really know how to interpolate it. So one thing that this allows you to do, let me, for example, so each of these edges are on a separate uh, smoothing group. If I were to put them on a smoothing group together, watch what you get now. So now you get, uh, mu it's, it's much different than this, where the whole thing is being smoothed evenly. Now you've got something that's very 
uh, round, almost like a cylinder, and then it becomes flat again uh, on the inside. And then you could even, so I placed all of these on um, uh, 25. If I were to add this one as well, so now all of the inside is on 25, but the outside is on another one, you get uh, the inside becomes very uh, rounded like a, some kind of half dome, but the edge between it and the outside stays hard. So to show you a real world example of that, this is uh, these are three armor pieces that use the double uh, turbo smooth. So this way, I actually was able to keep the um, armor piece actually quite uh, low resolution. There's, this is, if I were to just use one turbo smooth, <clears throat> this would need to be a lot higher resolution to hold these details. So what happens is you come to the first one, and you can see how um, everything is being sm smooth that's on the same uh, smoothing group, but it still keeps these hard edges. And the same here over on, on these two pieces. They use the same kind of thing. So this face right here, it's just um, four faces here. It stays hard, uh, but the you know the smooth areas um, on one smoothing group end up smoothing out. And then when I add the next one over top, you get everything smoothing out with uh, still hard edges. And this allows you to keep a much uh, lower uh, resolution um, control cage. Now one limitation is you'll see actually that you kind of need a division between each changes. One solid face uh, rarely smooths all that well. So as soon as you go and you put one ring between here, it will end up uh, holding, especially at 90 degree angles, uh, this division much better. So you'll notice on the low poly cage, I still normally have an edge through um, most faces so that every a straight line still has a division through it. This this kind of helps to hold uh, details a bit better. So this is how the uh, double smooth um, method of sub D modeling works.